how do as parents how do we make our daughters feel comfortable like how do you make anybody feel comfortable enough to say something when it's something so tragic funny. like that happens so um it's crazy so i, I probably never I, I never really say this out loud let alone the camera but i've i've I brought it up to you before you know there there's i was molested as a child mm. you know what i'm trying to say i've never told my mom never really had a conversation about it you know what i'm trying to say i've kind of healed through it the way I best could through God, through therapy in my own ways, right? And I'm still healing probably through it in different ways, you know, or still traumatized by it in certain ways, right? But the 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 reason why I feel like I was, I, I just haven't had the conversation with my mom or whatever is because one, a lot of times when children are young, parents aren't having early conversations. You get what I'm trying to say? I feel like, um, you know, my mom, I, I never recall my mom coming to me like, listen, these are... Your private parts. Mm. If anybody touches you here, it's wrong. If anybody does this to you, it's wrong. I don't care if anybody threatens you or harms you. There's nobody who's going to defend you more than me. Come tell me. Mm. Come do these things. You have to instill these into your child from a young age. So they already cutting up. Uh-uh, I'm telling my mom. Mm. I've been doing that with Amaya for a long time. And then you have to check in. You have to check in. You have to, hey, you know... Is there anything I can do to help you? Is there anything, you know, and just kind of instilling in them that you're their safety. Mm. There's nobody, you know, and, I, and I've and i done that with Amaya. And, you know, God forbid something still happen regardless. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I can't control everything. You just have to give them a safety enough to understand that this is wrong. You need to know it's wrong, first of all, because a lot of predators do the same thing. It's fine. You know what I'm saying? It's normal. And then once it happens, it happens. And they, and they keep doing it because now you're in shock. Like, you don't know. You know, it's, uh, you know, like I said, one in so many, this happened to so many women that I have multiple friends that this happened to, which unfortunately makes it normal. So we talk about it. And we talk about it how, you know, when it happened to them, whatever, it kept happening because now it's like you're so violated, but the only person who knows you're violated is the person who violated you. Mm. So you kind of keep staying in a cycle like, I don't want to tell nobody, like, so I'm going to just kind of keep letting it happen because at this point, you know, like, whatever. And I think, like, back then, parents did a poor job of just checking in. Like, you know, I'm always, I'm in everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to be in everything. Like, you know, or just too, too, too blind to feel like it can't be anybody. Mm -hmm. So you you leave your kids certain places too long. You leave them at places they have no business being. You don't know what's going on. You get what I'm trying to say. And one of my friends told me a heartbreaking story, and I was just like, "What?" And but it just is a result of parents just like, "I gotta go work. You go here." Da 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 da. Oh, I can't. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Like you have to be in tune with your kids. So all my what I feel like having the conversations as early as possible, and you have to check. In repeatedly, yes. Um, when you said early, um, yeah. What do you qualify as like early having a conversation early? What does that look like? I, uh, how early mm -hmm. is the age for people that are listening? Because you, I you feel know. like as early as the babies understand chess, private. What's that one? Mm -hmm. There's some weird people out here. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? Babies ain't exempt. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? So. As early as that, and then you keep having it though. It's not a one conversation. Like I've, I probably, my pride tired of me. I we have to this day since she was little. Like because you have to keep reminding them it's not right. You know if anybody is, and I tell her straight up, and I love you to death, Jay. But I've said it. I don't care who it is. Mm. If it's Jay's friend, if it's Jay, I don't. And you have to let them know you're not scared of nobody. Because a lot of like my my scenario, my friend scenario, it was people in the in vicinity of the family, yeah. in the family. And it's like, I don't want to tell them it was this man because that's my bro or that's such and such my cousin. Or no, I ain't scared of nobody. And I let Amaya know that from the, I don't care who, who, mm. who it is. And I think that some of our family members was scared who it was, like, which is why some people did go tell. And it's like, hush, hush, hush. Like, you know what I mean? Or, or, that ain't happening to you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's happened to some people. You know what I'm trying to say? And it's like, I ain't, I don't give a damn who it is. 
your grandfather. I will beat up whoever. Like, I let my kid know. It's me. You ain't got to worry about it, sweetheart. And I think they need to know that as a parent, you are willing to back them in every situation possible. Because if they don't feel that comfort in you, they're not going to come to you. They're not going to be like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? They, if you, they think you scared of Uncle Barry, they ain't coming to you. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? If they feel like y'all relationship is so tight that you was severe, your relationship with your kid for this person, they're not coming to you. I need my child to know ain't nobody above you. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? Ain't nobody about your safety. So as as long as they as long as they understand that's your you know kids get to a point they start to talk and you start to tell them things. That's your head. That's your elbow. The minute they understand, these are my breasts. This is my private. This is my butt. Listen, nobody's supposed to touch you there. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? If 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 you if it's not mommy and daddy washing you up, if it's anything that makes you feel, you come tell mommy. You keep having a conversation every single age because every age they're aging differently. Mm -hmm. And when they're seven and they're eight, they look different from when they're two and they're three. And then when they're 10 and they're 11, they look different than seven and eight. And when they're 13 and 14, they look different than that. And then here we go. Now we're a woman. You get what I'm trying to say? So they need to know at every stage because, and just, you know, you can't just, you can't be scared of those conversations and having the conversations and letting them know that you are not scared to go up against anyone. And I think it just helps with, opening the lines of communication because you can't avoid you you can't avoid that problems may occur because people are weird mm -hmm. but you can kind of open the door that your child may tell you something's wrong even if they don't tell you something's wrong they might they might signal you like you know what i'm saying you might leave them somewhere and they're like mm -mm, i don't want to stay here say less if my child says she don't want to say jay no i will go pick up my you uncomfortable no worries I, I done had my child flew out from a situation that she wasn't comfortable in. It wasn't even with no man. It was with a female. But I don't care who it is. You know what I'm trying to say? They need to know you come in regardless. Like, no, my mama going to come pick me up. My daddy going to come pick me up. It don't matter. If I feel weird, they come in right now. Yes, they are. Mm. Because if they don't feel that way, you know, you kind of, you, you, you open up a dungeon for them to crawl in that, you know, they might not walk out. You know, they might not come up out of. And then they hold on to that for a long time. So... I don't care as long as them babies can understand this is my head. Talk to them, you know, every age, every stage. So no, I think it's super important yeah. to, to for for Amaya and Alani to know that like like you said, we got their back, right? Mm -hmm. But also understand the importance of boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. So even if like like you said, even if I touch you wrong mm -hmm. or whatever you touch wrong to be able to be like, mm -hmm. mm -mm, I don't like that. Right. That mm -hmm. that makes me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that's super important because if you set that straight in the house, then it's easy. It's second nature it's to do it outside of the nature. house. So I was like, if that was to ever happen to you, right, and you feel uncomfortable, understand that not just that I'll, I'm going to come handle mm -hmm. a situation and beat somebody up, but just understand that you are safe enough to tell me as mm -hmm. well, right? Like, it's safe enough to to let me know what's going on, even if you feel embarrassed, even if whatever. Exactly. The worst case scenario, the the mm -hmm. most outlandish thing, the craziest thing, at least let me know mm -hmm. so I can have your back, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, so cer certain people like, and I hate to make this, not hate, but yeah. it's like, for example, like people, some people smoke with their children because yeah. they'd rather smoke with them because they know outside somebody right. could do anything foul, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'd rather us talk about sex, right? You tell me, how it was or whatever, not how, not no examples, that's weird, but like, you tell me that you're sexually active and, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, things like that so we can keep the conversation open so we can communicate about it yeah. so it won't feel weird when you feel like somebody touched you in in, yep. in a weird place, right? Because yep. sometimes you might feel like, I don't want to have this conversation with my parent. I might have it with my friend, I just don't yep. want to have it with my parent because it feel weird. Nah, it's, it's a thin line between friendship and parenting, mm -hmm. but understand that you can talk to me and we can have a relationship outside of just the parent and the and the uh, child dynamic exactly. as well, if that makes sense. But I think it also comes into, again, opening the conversation. My mom never just directly asked me, has anybody ever like made you feel weird in any way? Mm. Nobody's ever asked me that. Oh, I be in a body. Has anybody, do anybody like make you? You got to ask too, because if you ask, sometimes if you just free, just ask them, it's your kid. I feel like. Don't be scared to speak to your kids about nothing. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? I'm like, you have to. And I think because so much I've been through so much as a kid, I just have to ask because I'm too scared of my child even experiencing a small dose of what I've been through. I need to know. 
You mm. get what I'm trying to say? I need to know. Like, I, I can't even sleep if I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? So I have to ask. Like, I'd be like, hey, um, anybody make you feel real? I, like, I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I put, I, I, I always pull up my, me and Amaya, I'll go in there, it'll just be me and her. I'll sit down. I'm like, how you feeling? Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just want, is anybody, I just start asking. And it'd be all type of shit. Like, but I just need to know. Because if, maybe they want to tell you, but nobody's asking them. You know what I mean? Like, they too scared to start the conversation. They kids. We can't hold them to the expectation to even start conversations because they like, my mom ain't never talked to me like about this. I don't even know if I should bring it to her attention. Like, so you got to ask them, like, we got to be adults like in asking them and not expecting kids to even have that much courage they're babies like mm. you know what i mean you look how long it took us as adults to find ourselves understand courage and getting over embarrassment like these are kids to even expect them to come tell us anything is crazy because mm. they have to muster up the confidence to do that and they don't have all the confidence yet because we're building it in them still so i'm just asking I'm, mm. I'm, 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 hey, and you find a way to ask it, you know what I'm saying? So they feel safe. You know, like I said, like whenever I talk to Amaya, I'm, I create the safe setting for us. I get in, I go lay in her bed with her. Hey, how you? Like, you know, how you doing? Like, ooh, what's interesting that you been? I just started talking to her so I could get her to be comfortable and understand this is our safe space. You can tell me anything. It's just me and you in here. And, you know, I encourage all parents and you do that with Alani and Amaya by yourself. It don't even have to be because maybe she's more comfortable telling you than me. You know what I'm saying? But like as her parents, as Alani and Amaya's parents, it's our duty to create them safe spaces that they feel coming. Like, you know, at least my mom come talk to me and ask me how I'm feeling and ask me what I'm going through and ask me, you know what I'm saying? Because they'll, they'll, they'll talk to you. They'll mm. talk to you. No, that's mm -hmm. real. Mm. Nah, um, I think we just touched on something that was very important, which was creating a safe space. And um, earlier we were talking about like the influence of peers. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, there was basically a study that was saying by like the age of 10, mm -hmm. a lot of kids start to look towards their peers as in, for influence. And given the, the, the magnitude of the conversation, and you mentioned it a little bit, it's like creating a safe space. Um, how do you continue as they age? You know, it's like as a child, you know, a lot of children find a safe space with their parents. But as they age, you know, and they start to go into later into their adolescence, their teenage years, how do you continue to reinstill that confidence last day space? Like, I don't know. I, so it's hard for me to answer that question because I feel like. Um, I mean, go ahead, you I go feel ahead. like to answer the question, right, you just create the safe space. That doesn't mean that they're going to feel safe, feel safe or yeah. enter the safe space. Right. So you create the safe space by simply just letting them know that, yo, we can talk about these things. If you ever feel uncomfortable, come talk to me. Come talk to me. Come talk to me. Now, you open the door. That don't. That doesn't. That, that doesn't mean that they're going to walk through the door every single time. Mm -hmm. They might walk through it a couple times, but when they do walk through the door, and they are vulnerable, then we have to make. We have to validate their feelings and 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 empathize and communicate with them. So they understand that we understand. So they know that we understand what you're saying, right? Because mm -hmm. you, because sometimes you can create a safe space and then s pull the rug up under their their legs the moment they open, they walk yeah. through the door of a safe space or what they thought was a safe mm -hmm. space, right? So we gotta know that, yo, we gotta one create the safe space, yo. This is a safe space. Two, um, confirm or uh, what's the exact whatever? I'm not about to do it. You create the safe space is one, right? Solidify the safe space when they when they in, enter the door of safety and say, "Yo, I um affirm their feelings, right? Uh, make sure you 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 acknowledge what they got going on, mm -hmm. and then you talk to them, right? The moment you try to like, tell them that they're wrong, yeah, demonize them or anything, you right? The moment you do that, then it's not safe anymore, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's how we can create the safe space, and sometimes and, and just be wait and just be patient, right? Because sometimes yeah. you might create a safe space and they might not feel safe yeah. anymore, right? But ask, make sure you continue to conversate with them, communicate mm -hmm. with them. Like, hey, do you feel safe? If mm -hmm. if anything was to happen, would you feel safe to talk talking yeah. to me about it? Right? Like, why or why not? What's some yeah. things that that I do to make you feel uncomfortable right. to talk to me about these things? Right? Let me know. Is it because I'm just a parent? Is it because you don't feel comfortable? Like, mm -hmm. let me know. And then because then you can kind of aid with giving somebody else. Exactly. Um. So I I definitely agree, and I just would add, I think. The reason why I probably didn't feel safe a lot around a lot of people when I was younger is simply because people, adults, treat kids like 
they're not little people. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? I always say that kids are, they carry the same emotions that we have. They just, they're, they're just smaller people. Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? And I think, you know, when you don't treat children like human beings, like actual beings, and I mean, like, don't be embarrassing them. Don't be, you know, the same things you don't like. You don't like people embarrassing you. You don't like people judging you for no reason. You don't like people making you feel shame when you do something and, you know, down your back like you so downright dog bad. You know, when they do something like, oh, I can't believe you. You just dumb. You just, you can't treat, you have to treat them like human beings with the same decency that you would like because they're just like you. Mm. They're just smaller people. So they want to be treated fairly. If you're treating your kids unfair, they know you're treating them unfair. This is no longer safe. If you embarrassing them when they do stuff and you blasting their business to all of your family members and you calling them on the phone and you telling them everything they did that's in your house, you embarrassing them. They don't feel safe with you because you're going to embarrass them. Right. If you judge everything they do and they're not able to be themselves and every time they come to you and they tell you something, you're judging them, oh, and da-da-da-da, they're not going to feel safe with you. If every time they try to open up and tell you how they feel, but you're a child, you don't know nothing, they're not going to feel safe with you. It, it's just you have to treat them like human beings because the minute that they go from human, they're not human beings, you're just kids that live in my house, they don't feel safe. Mm. So I try to work very hard at just allowing my daughter to be herself. You get what I'm trying to say? I don't. That does not mean I have to agree with everything, but I don't have to demonize who she is either. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, you're that person. I didn't No, That's who God gave me as my child. So through everything she is, I have to love her through that. And even when loving her is hard, I have to tell her in the right way. Mm. So I have to tell her in ways that I would want somebody who loves me to tell me if they don't agree or they think I'm doing something that's detrimental to me. Talk to me in a loving way so I can understand it. Not yelling at me all over the place, not you know, and don't get it. Like I said, they're still kids. And of course, just like with anybody, somebody might get frustrated with me. Somebody might get angry with me. Those are normal. But I mean, treating them these ways just because they're kids and you can and you treat them that way all the time. Mm. It's not OK. They're still human beings. And if you want your kids to have some for a safety with you, you have to treat them like that. Or, you know, they're going to look for a safety in their peers. They're going to go look for the people who validate them make them feel like something even if it ain't much of nothing it's just more than what you make them feel like mm. you know what i mean like eat oh they, but they at least they don't criticize them everything they do at least they ain't judging everything they do the whole time they don't even give a damn they just don't judge them you know what i'm trying to say now they he loved me he mm. be her but he loved me at least he don't talk to me like you do at least he uh, you know it's just it's so much that comes with just parenting that people don't want to admit that they influence, you know, and then granted, like you can't control everything, but you can control how you treat your kid. You know what I mean? And they still will turn out to be their own person, but at least you were a good person to them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in bare minimum. Like, I think so that's I the think, hardest part. We yeah. said it before. Hardest part about parenting is knowing the th knowing that your kid is going to be uh -huh. whoever they want to be regardless right like you could discipline them mm -hmm. you can give them the the, the best moral mm -hmm. principles and practices all you want but at the end of the day they're going to be who they want to be because yep. they were who they yep. were before they got here it right. just is what it is and you have no control over you that you don't but i will tell you this i don't always feel like i had the best parents but i never forget the real shit they told me mm. so i'll say that as long as you're a good person to your children and you cons consistently giving them that real and giving them that love, they'll never forget it. Even if they choose to be who they want to be, it'll be in the back of their head. Mm. And, you know, like I said, like, no matter what my parents did, to this day, my mom and my dad have told me some real stuff that sticks with me to this day. And it'll never leave me because, no, facts. you know what I mean? It's just real. It, it didn't matter. Even with them being... I, I could wish they was this, wish that, but they still left me with some things. So if you are actively being a parent that instills good qualities in your kids, it won't leave their brain. It'll be embedded. They may choose to go the other way, but it will never leave their brain. So eventually, it'll something will stick. No, something it's crazy because stick. I was saying, um, and this is what I was saying in the car, but like 
you know, like my mom's a single mom, she, drug abuse, all that, like anything you could think of. But at the end of the day, my mother gave me the foundation of mm-hmm. who I am today. Mm-hmm. Right. So like we can say I can say whatever I want, but my mom's instilled faith in me. Right. Mm-hmm. About God. She yep. like I, who knows? I wouldn't even be as open or where I am, am today in my spiritual journey if it wasn't for her. For mm-hmm. sure. I know for a fact. Right. When it comes to um, principles, she I, I heard these things first through her. She told me the importance of principles, telling the truth, being honest. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, that's why I got a conscience, to be honest, right? Like, if you do something, own up to it as a man. Like, and, and she was a single mother. So a lot mm-hmm. of people say about single mothers and to, to and co-parent or uh, both parents in the household. Mm-hmm. My mom's, if, if I can say anything, she gave me the foundation to be a good person, Period. regardless of any imperfection yep. she could have. You feel me? Yep. So I think you're right. Like if you yeah, are a good matter. person and just be a good person you to your child, they will, they, will, they, will, they will know what that is. Circumstance won't even matter. Not even close. Facts. It won't matter. Circumstance, where it don't matter where you live. It don't matter how you're living. Y'all could be living in a car, but I tell you, if you're in that car giving them real game, mm-hmm. real lessons, real Bible real stuff to take into the world it will stick and that's mm. why it's when you're not talking to your kids to me mm-hmm. is when it's detrimental mm. you know so th- and that don't matter your circumstance you could be in the richest house you want but if you ain't talking to them kids oh it's gonna show mm. you could be in a car and if you ain't talking to them kids it's going 10 times show because in a circumstance like that oh now it's detrimental I feel like when you're not talking to your kids you're not teaching them real life lessons and giving them tools to go in, out into the world. But if you are talking to your children, literally talking to them, mm. conversation about everything though. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, not just how was school. Oh, that's what's up. You did good. Uh, Cause I don't care. I seen a post today, actually. It's so crazy. I didn't even know we were going to talk about this. It literally was like, it doesn't matter how good they got, how good of a grade they got on that math test how uh, well they want, to, how much they made sure they was up early for school. If you ain't really there for your kids, it's still going to show. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's just, it's going to show. So, you know.